Now as a dad, I know that every parent's greatest dream is for their children to grow, learn, and succeed. So let me address the biggest issue of the session, which is school finance. We have received the decree of the Kansas Supreme Court and are putting forth a proposal to comply, as we have done with the prior decisions. My budget recommendations includes an additional $600 million in funding over the next five years. This multi-year approach will provide the time necessary for school districts to plan and spend this additional money more effectively. My proposal does not include a tax increase. Now let me make one thing very clear. The people of Kansas expect results. The Kansas State Board of Education will be responsible for making sure they get them. Now I suggest they consider the following goals to do so. First, we should reach a 95% statewide graduation rate. Second, a minimum of 75% of our students should be continuing their education after graduation, whether that be through attending college, earning a post-secondary certification, or joining the military. Third, we should accelerate the movement of Kansas schools to the Kansans CAN model for school redesign launched by the Kansas Department of Education. To help us stay on course to achieve these goals, I propose five strategic objectives for K-12 education. First, Kansas has great teachers. We should have a higher average teacher pay than any of our surrounding states. Second, we should increase the number of school counselors and school psychologists in Kansas schools by 150 positions each year. Third, we should have at least 50 schools participating in the Kansans CAN School Redesign Project. Fourth, every Kansas high school should offer at least 15 credit hours of dual credit coursework to every high school student at no additional cost to parents. This is a minimum, and it's clearly something we can do. This can be through a partnership between high schools and the state's institutions of higher learning. And fifth, they should also offer every Kansas high school student, again at no additional cost to parents, the choice of taking either the ACT college entrance exam or the work keys assessment. These goals should be achieved within the next five years. Six hundred million dollars is a very significant investment. And Kansans expect to see students in every school in our state thrive and achieve, particularly our students who the court cited as being inadequately served under our current funding. We cannot, we must not, repeat the mistakes of others who have gone down the primrose path of thinking that educational results can be forced by massive infusions of taxpayer money alone. Money by itself will not solve the problem. For the best illustration of this, one need look no further than the Kansas City, Missouri School District, sometimes called America's most costly educational failure. Federal courts supercharged the district with nearly $2 billion in little more than a decade. And when it was all spent, there was little to show in academic improvement. Test scores were stagnant, achievement gaps remained, and the dropout rate actually went up. We must learn from this history. Additionally, we must stop the never-ending cycle of litigation on school finance. I urge the legislature to put a constitutional amendment on the ballot this year addressing our school finance system. The people need to be heard on this central issue of state government. The governor's proposal spreads this over five years and that as the state is growing and as schools can absorb those funds, that's the goal, is to spread that out over a longer period of time so that you can actually get lead on the target, that's money going into the classroom. And this
of the more interesting state of the state speeches I've heard in my 16 years. I'm going to start with three things that the governor said tonight that I absolutely agree with. One, Kansas works better when we all work together. Two, we should dream boldly. Three, education is the first priority. Every child in Kansas deserves to pursue their God-given talents wherever they live, and we should provide teachers the resources they need to teach. Most importantly, Kansans want their children and grandchildren to attend fully funded schools. This past fall, the Kansas Supreme Court ruled for the 12th time since 2003 that the Republican legislature has failed its constitutional duty to provide suitable funding for K-12 schools. This came as no surprise as the level of funding in Senate Bill 19, which was the school finance bill that passed last year, four years from now will still be below the level of funding that we had 10 years ago. Thank you. 10 years ago would be the level of funding four years from now. And so that's why the Supreme Court has said, has ordered, that we need a system that adequately and equitably funds schools. We don't need a constitutional amendment to amend Article 6 or do away with Article 6 because it's our constitutional duty. The court has done its job. Now it's time that we do our job. constitutional amendment it sounds like he wants something there that seems to me like something that might be a non-starter for you for me most likely i can't conceive a constitutional language that i can support the change um, I, there's there's a wealth of reasons why but and, and if it were something i could support there's no way two thirds of the, the rest of the chamber would because you have so many factions looking at so many different ideas so I just don't see two thirds of us coming together around a, a constitutional house. Bare bones idea of a plan. They've, they've surprised some folks. Um, Six hundred million dollars over five years, no tax increase. Do you have any idea how that's going to happen or could happen? None. None. No idea. Uh, you know, it, the devil be in the details. We will see his budget proposal, I guess, tomorrow, maybe the next day, whenever, this week, we will receive the governor's budget proposal. That will shed some light on how he proposes to pay for it. I don't know. Uh, this is such an about face for him that I, I can't predict what is in it. But I do know last year he balanced his budget proposal by suggesting that we securitize the tobacco settlement payments for early childhood and that we, you know, do things like delay pay payments to papers. So a bunch of non-starters. So it really won't no, matter to me to what the proposals are right now. There was nothing in that speech to tell us how he intended to get the job done. What differences do you see between the Johnson County area in terms of school finance formula and further changes? Some good work was done last year. Um, what's your thought on that? You've been very involved in that, that process. I, I have been steadfast in my commitment to ensuring that what we enact is good for all Kansas age school school age children, and that we aren't picking winners and losers. I and mean, that's the whole point of the case. To, tomorrow's workforce in Johnson County it appears to be being educated in classrooms all around the state today. It behooves us to care about boosting outcomes for for all. No, 
Well, I think it's 